um, you know, when I don't have a pad, I write them on little things because my brain won't hold all these funny you names. You didn't take your pad with you last night. Pardon? You said you didn't take that pad. I should have. And I'm just trying to find where in the okay, heck I the put that. Okay, the guns are wired. And I am not wired. Uh, I know he was called the commissar. And they called him the commissar. He was the one who did all of the training for the, um, well, they had a halo school, you know, George told me in the Philippines, where they trained um, the Delta Force, the assassins in, in the Philippines. They had also had a school like that. The Australians had one in um, um, Indonesia on an island where they're having big um, kind of East Timor. East Timor, yeah. Yeah, it's in the mountains. And it was started, yeah, and the Portuguese are involved in this in some way. Based on your newest lesson, you learn about the line of this. Very good? All right, great. Uh, we're rolling. We're recording. We are doing it right now. Um, we're having a fascinating conversation, talking to the wife of uh, the former... Um, Chief of Staff, Marine Atlantic head of the um, intelligence group that went uh, to Beirut. They were already meeting over there. Uh, he was before the Beirut bombing. The uh, NATO uh, intelligence wet operations guy, psychological operations guy. Okay, now when you refer to wet operations, W-E-T, does that stand for something? Yes, it means murder, uh, assassinations groups. Oh. NATO has a group of assassins. Uh, and psychological operations specialists uh -huh. who work in combined operations to destroy targets. Okay. They, they, my husband tried to explain to me the first three years of marriage um, how it all works. Uh, I was assistant director of the Chamber of Commerce. I was the first woman on the board of the Foreign Commerce Club in Norfolk. He thought that I was a worldly woman. I had um, dated a number of guys who were high level, like Jerry Unruh, who was the captain of the Saratoga, um, a, uh, a man who was very high up in the Army intelligence in Richmond. Mm -hmm. um, I had been married to a governor's grandson. His family were all in intelligence. Gra his father was Harvard economics professor. They thought... You even mentioned that years ago you, you dated... Uh uh, John Engler, John who Engler, is now he our governor. ROTC. I, I'm sure it's the same John Engler uh -huh. if he was in the Navy. Um, I dated a John Engler who was um, in the ROTC in Norfolk because, you know, Norfolk is the largest military complex in the world. We have Langley, uh, the Air Force Base, which does intelligence work. We have Camp Perry, which is an intelligence, uh, international intelligence spot. All of the naval bases, the Master Jet Base, Training and Doctrine Command, which is Army, Fort Story. And in fact, Fort Story was where uh, the recent S Secretary of the Army was told he had to leave. I have intelligence guys who tell me truth because they know they can't talk, and I get a lot of scoops. Toko West, who was basically honest and like Colin Powell, most African-American men are not going to condone murder and assassinations and so forth when they find out about it. Um, Togo West... No, you, you think there's something... Uh, I'm missing something here. The Afro-American man is not like... Generally. Mm -hmm. Generally. Um, so you, you feel that like Colin Powell is a different cut of general than these other guys have been oh, talking absolutely. about? Oh, absolutely. Colin Powell's... What, the, the wonderful thing about the, some of the African-American men I've met is they'll mm -hmm. tell truth. Why, why would they allow these guys to rise in rank then? Um, as, as puppets, thinking that they will you know, be able to make them do certain things because psychologically they're innocent, they're naive. They cannot believe that our government is, has got hit squads, that there's group sex going on, that they are giving people money in exchange you know, for their services, uh, mercenary training is going on uh, in the Army and the Air Force at the highest circles. And um, I, Colonel John Ryman, Dr. John Ryman, they have him targeted as a kook. 
Colonel John Ryman lives in California. He was on the high track up the Rising Star track. He was in Great Britain. He found out about a murder over there. Okay. He reported it. He also had the crazy idea that there ought to be a peace college in Cambridge. You know, we ought to really start working towards peace. Well, the minute he got back, he gave a, an idea, a synopsis of his sort of peace, peace college idea to Colin Powell and his wife. Colin Powell took it to the National Security Council. When Ryman got back, and I'm not sure of the logistics and the chronology of all of this, but I'm in contact with him, um, he was put in a, in a funny farm. I think he was put in, uh, in a place in either New Orleans or um, uh, St. Elizabeth's Hospital where they put uh, Ezra Pound and mm -hmm. where they've got Reagan's uh, assassin. Mm -hmm. St. Elizabeth's Hospital, like the Eastern State Hospital in Williamsburg, has Army intelligence people in there. They're targets, people who have decided to tell truth or whatever. In other words, um, people who are believe in the American dream, who are mm -hmm. Christians, who are trying to get things straightened out. Um, if they transgress that line where they upset somebody in, in high command, mm -hmm. just like in Germany, they're all, they all of a sudden move from being a person to being a target, mm -hmm. from being a human being, a Christian, a loving, wonderful soul, to being a target, therefore the enemy. Mm -hmm. This is also what happened in Germany. Why should God make this all wonderful and beautiful? Those of us who have the courage of our convictions and who believe in, in what Christ did, mm -hmm. who stand tall, why should the leaders not be able to speak and tell truth? Because it's in the rainbow of truth, the rainbow of individuals who are God-fearing and love truth, in, in which we can build a better world. So why are good people silenced? Why are their papers gone through? Um, I have a, uh, an interesting... Um, uh, I, I took some notes last night, and I'm trying to... Let's okay. See. Well, they're, they're silenced because they are, uh, they're, they're in a conflict of, of good versus evil yeah. in this, this, this struggle. Where's my, where am I, um, I need my... Oh, no problem. Uh, we can find Yeah, it. I need my... Um, uh, your checkmate book is down yeah. there. Oh, yeah, this is what... Is I'm, it in there? Yeah. What, what's happened to me, what's happened to people like Marianne Poors, Deborah Von Trapp, um, Colonel let's, Sabo's dad... Let's talk about uh, Deborah Von Trapp for a second, because there, uh, I, I, I've heard the name, but um, I, I somehow associate her with, uh, with something negative, or there was some discrediting of what she... Is she the same Deborah Von Trapp that alleged that the Oklahoma City bombing was somehow Japanese-related? Or is that a different um, person? Now, she may... I, I do not know. I've met her on the phone through Sarah McClendon when I was staying with Sarah. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, Everybody's experience is different. When, when you're a Christian, when you're a very strong Protestant Christian, as I am, and you're walking in light, you're walking in truth, you, you take people at their word until they, you find okay. out that they've lied to you. Oh. And, and if they have intentionally lied, then, you know, I don't, I just let God deal with them. You know what I mean? Okay. I, I don't believe So maybe in somebody fed her disinformation uh, solely designed to discredit her. Yeah. Uh, she... And, and I do believe this is true. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I believe that, I know that she worked in the White House. I know she worked under a man named Getzman and some mob figures in the White House who were Army. Mm -hmm. Now this CIA thing, from my, my experience, is bogus. Because every person I've known who was in the CIA was in military intelligence first. For example, uh, my husband. Mm -hmm. Um, he told me furtively when I saw him in court, I don't work for the CIA. You know, I, I knew he was telling the truth. He was afraid. He wanted me to know. Point is, he works under the Army. He's totally, he's a, a Marine Corps, high-level intelligence officer. But he's under all these Army people. So I'm having to assume that the judge, the lawyers, the commissioners, all the people who are handling my husband when he's around me because I really believe that he 
loves me, you know, even though he's under their control. And I think that's why he's been totally kept away from me. His daughter-in-law told me he, he can't come back because he'd end up staying. You know, it was... Um, the, the point is that David Lay, my brother-in-law for, for 20-some years, um, I married uh, John Garland Pollard, whose sister Mary Lloyd Pollard married a CIA agent, David Lay. David Lay was Harvard Hasty Pudding, translates Mandarin Chinese. He's a brain. Um, his family came over from Germany. I think they were Zionists. He, he doesn't believe in, in any religion, uh, but he is still working for this intelligence arm. He's, he's doing wargaming for this monolith, this global monolith. He's um, uh, playing chess by mail. He's um, uh, writing articles about the, the Middle East. He's an expert on, you know, what's going on in the Middle East from the Israeli perspective. Um, he's army. I was with my sister-in-law when he went on a mission. And she was in the same psychological state that I was in. This is, this is what, and that's how I know. And that state succinctly is? Keep the women out of it. Terrorize the women. Um, make the women fearful of their own... In other words, make them, I can't describe what I went through except to say that every single Marine wife that I know is in that psychological state. Thank God, thank my grandmother for her wonderful Presbyterian background, you know, women are intelligent, kind of, you've got the spunk in you or the genes or mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, whatever it is, I know truth, and truth is, is, is vitally important to me. I cannot live a lie. Do you know, I just, I can't live mm -hmm. a lie. I cannot, maybe, maybe I was injected with pentothal when I was an infant, I don't know. But, uh, so like that incident at the officer's <laughs> club where your husband uh, at the time told you, just get used to it, this is the way that it is. Yes. Y you just can't get used to living some facade and, and looking the other way as if something doesn't exist. No. And I mean, I, he, he was, he's sick. My husband's really mentally sick. Any man, I believe he killed his first wife, Sue. He's dangerous. We're married for a month. Uh, he gets a letter and a phone call from Mary Clark goes to lab and Anne Bouchou. And, you know, naturally a wife who's newly married to a handsome man isn't wanting other women to write. And I'm saying, you know, and I've already found out who they are. I've got a master's degree, I'm a researcher, I've, you know, and I'm saying, George, what are you doing hanging around spies? I didn't know about double agents and, and Kashmir Yost is on the Council of Foreign Relations. Her son, I, I'm sure it's her son or her cousin, and her husband, as I mentioned before, was a, uh, a Muslim who was really a turn, turn person on the, uh, the Palestinians, who worked at the American University of Beirut. Uh, he, my husband was sleeping with her, Al Gray. Everybody knew this. Um, and I didn't know that this is what you do until I called Valerie Wilhelm, General Charles Wilhelm's wife on the phone. Now, who is General Charles Wilhelm right now? And, and let me tell you what she told me. Okay. You just have to get used to it, Kay. Um, she told me about, you know, her husband with, I said, George has got another man, Lieutenant Colonel Michael O'Boyle, whom I was told is his boyfriend, you know. <laughs> and, and, she, and she says you just had to get used to she it? She said you just got to get used to it. Same thing came from the wife of General John Sheehan, Jack Sheehan, head of NATO, a friend of mine, mm -hmm. then to parties at my house. And, and I see, by now I've gotten my little tape recorder from Radio Shack, you know. And I'm taping phone calls because nobody's going to believe me, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've got my little tape recorder, and I'm talking to um, uh, Sheehan's wife. Well, she's saying, come on over. Let's have coffee. You come over at so-and-so time. So I invite Carolyn Millis, whose husband was the temporary chief of staff after my husband's wife murder. Mm -hmm. So I know Sue was murdered blow on the head. I had so many blows on the head, you can't even believe it. Broken bones and so forth. Well, in the middle of these 
terrorism uh, episodes that, that, you know, my husband would put me through, he would say things like, um, you know, I'm down on the ground, he's got a 45 to my head, or he's strangling me with a, his thumb on my juggler vein, you know, and he's saying in this sergeant-like voice, you have got to believe me, you cannot question me. In other words, it's like I am being interrogated or I am being, it's the most awful experience to be, to have the one you want to love, the one you have made your commitment with, mm-hmm. have you in pinholes and, and knowing he's an experienced guy, you know, so, it's horrible. Mm-hmm. And these wives, now I, don't, I cannot say whether their husbands have done the same thing. I don't think they have. But what they train them to do is to be speeding along the highway. It's, it's uh, shock treatment is what it is. I've, I've been told it's shock treatment. And they're, they're driving along the highway. And you've got an important person to meet or an important party. You know, you're all dressed up. Or you're going to somebody's house. So... He screeches on the brakes, provokes you in some way. You don't even want to fight. You say, I don't want to fight. You know, what, are you, what is this all about? And you're, he's just speeding up, going like, you know, 90 miles an hour. Screeches on the brakes, and then he gets out and runs. It, it's, you cannot believe it's horrible. And where did, where did he run to? Oh, um, there was a party, uh, a Norwegian party. Um, the first time that happened was when we were down in um, uh, North Carolina uh, with the um, camera, you know, when he wanted to get my camera. I nearly drowned. He wanted me to tell him where the camera was. Um, he tried to kill me that night uh, to scare me so that I would behave. But I, I was raised in a family with strong men, you know, uh, you stand tall, you don't let people intimidate you when Mm -hmm. you know you're right Mm -hmm. because there are more important things God is over above us all Jesus Christ is above us all truth is above everything the Ten Commandments are above everything you know under that is is Jesus Christ and then your mate so I put you know that's why I put him in very high esteem but Mm -hmm. I knew he was not normal I'm an intelligent woman, I read, so I was hoping I could change him. Mm-hmm. So it was a battle, it was a spiritual battle going on, I knew it was a spiritual battle, and I was believing that um, that I could, you know, reprogram him, essentially, mm-hmm. subconsciously. Now, I didn't know that at the time, what was going through me, mm-hmm. but I was really uh, being tested. Of course, the many years of operant conditioning he'd been through, fortified and solidified his positions yes. far more he was far more entrenched a, a an operative than you were going to be able to undo oh he was involved in the halo program the max uh, halo what's halo um it's he mentioned it was something to do with training assassins and training psychological operations specialists it was in the philippines mm-hmm. they also had one in um, Panama, okay. they had a school for army and other guys where they would strip them down nude, they would tie them onto logs. The man who ran the school was uh, dressed up as a Nazi soldier, even though he was, his name was Olin Czech or something. He was a uh, Czechoslovakian pervert. Mm-hmm. Um, then they had a man who dressed up like a woman who was really pretty, you know? And, and here are these guys nude, and they're training them to kill. And in fact, uh, this was, there's a book called Copperhead, which I have a copy of, which is all about, um, it was written by a uh, commando gorilla who was from North Carolina who had been battered badly, or West Virginia, I think he was. And his father had battered him, beaten him. Well, what they do is, in the prisons, through this CASA system and so forth, they take the innocent little boys who've been battered by their parents Mm -hmm. and they turn them into assassins by making homosexuals of them or something. Now, 
I believe that these men are redeemable because I believe that men like my husband and Oswald, if, if some, they're held by the secrecy, by the power of this adolescent group which controls them. And I believe that if they knew that there were strong women, mothers, and wives who would be behind them a thousand percent, they'll have the courage to come and speak out. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Or at least to, um, to stop the, 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 the growth of this stuff, because it's the growth of this stuff they are intending to destroy America. Well, there certainly seems to be a growth in homosexual activity, homosexual acceptance, homosexual promotion, promotion. Uh, homosexual acceptance in our society today. Yeah. And uh, it just seems like everywhere you turn, you're finding a little group of homosexuals. Or, or uh, mm -hmm. even in our local community, I'm surprised how many homosexuals are running businesses. Mm -hmm. And certain restaurants mm -hmm. uh, are becoming homosexual hangouts. So you know, well, the owner must be a homo. Mm -hmm. He hires homos. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I hate to admit that I think this is the way things are in business and banking and in education. Oh, the local college, yeah. university. Yeah. Um, I've, I've had people tell me that, that they're just loaded. You cannot get a job unless you are special, elite, irregular. Now. The frightening thing here is number one. This is the underlying thing. This is what happened in Nazi Germany. This is exactly the same pattern that happened in Nazi Germany. The exclusion of women and mothers who love their children. Now, I'm pragmatic enough to realize and say, look, we, we mothers look at history and we look at the future. We're pretty daggone damn wise. I don't use profanity unless I'm talking to soldiers, and, but I've learned to, to, to use, you know, this is what they listen to. They're, they're really, you know, I can, I can talk sailor talk, I can talk marine talk, I can talk commando talk, because I'm the, you know, little bitch who loves Jesus. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, when you're in the streets, Christ wasn't, he wasn't out there with all the, the goody goodies. He was out there in the streets. He was out there talking to them, the right. drunks and so forth. I know how to reach them because I don't mind transgressing into this kind of little verbiage if it, that's what Jesus Christ did. But um, the, the danger here is that, yes, it's growing. It's a growth industry. It's growing exponentially. So, so what's going to happen? What's going to happen? They're cloning people. You know, they do, do they need women? You know, how, which women are they going to have? The party girls, the bimbos? Um, in Norfolk, just to give you an example, Lieutenant Governor Dick Davis, Marine, second wife is a prostitute. He loved her very much. She had a wig salon. My uncle, Dr. George Bentley Bird, was the major obstetrician for Everybody in Norfolk, prostitutes, everybody. Mm -hmm. He told our whole family knows, you know, who the the prostitutes are, who goes to the Saint and Sinners banquets. Judge Judge Richard Kellum, go. I mean, this is a nice guy. Now the Saint and Sinners banquet is this a local affair? Yeah, okay. yeah. Every town has got this sort of, you know, Saints and Sinners group, the the sleep around group or whatever. Okay. You know, the the group who tolerates it and has a little fun. Uh -huh. And they're all, you know, they're all guys. Well, okay. Um, but the, the thing is, where is it going to lead? Um, this is why women like me who, who know need to be involved in the process of leveling things out a little bit. I don't know whether I'm describing it. When you target good, strong people who know what to do or who can figure out quickly what to do in given situations, it's like a targeting good people taking their papers, going into the leaders' houses. The leaders who pop up, who are trying to get things straight, are the ones who really know what's going on. They're just the people 
who need to be involved in the process of leveling things out. Mm -hmm. Because, hey, maybe they've gone off a little here, a little there, but the point is, they know that truth and light is, is, is what is going to make that balance work out. And when you marginalize women, target women, mothers, wives, who are strong inside. Well, I'm talking about really core strong, genetically strong. Mm -hmm. Even Clausewitz says that the, the moral is three to one of the, over the, the arms, you know. Um, if they want to win over these little guys, they've got to have credibility. What's happening now and why they're all afraid is they have no credibility. The SEALs are the worst. They were so afraid about that one little doctor that the SEALs gang raped in Norfolk. Why? Because the whole credibility of the SEALs is shot. Okay, now I, I, I'm not sure. I, I'm aware of that. There was a, a gang rape of a doctor by the SEALs? Yes. By a, a group of SEALs? Oh, yeah, in Virginia Beach. And the when did this occur? Oh, uh, two years ago. And the interesting thing is that the parents of this girl, she's beautiful, from Georgia. You know, this is a, a wonderful human being who went into what used to be Poppy's. It's kind of a, the night place in Virginia Beach. When, when I was single, mm -hmm. uh, I went there, you know. I mean, we would go there, four of us women, young mm -hmm. women, Molly and Sally and myself, and we go there, and the doctors would go there. You know, it was kind of a place. Well, the SEALs are taking over Virginia Beach. SEAL team uh, four, six, and eight. And this gal went in there. Uh, one of the men just thought, oh, she's great. Let's take her out. They take her, t took her out, raped her, killed her. Goodness. Strangled her. And was anybody ever prosecuted? Um, I don't, I don't really know what happened because it's been hushed up by the local courts who are controlled by Army JAGs and Marine Corps. And again, JAG stands for? Judge Advocate General. And these are guys all who have been involved in their wives have been handled, gotten rid of their first wife, their uh, sleeping around with another bimbo woman or another man. They're participating in group sex. C. Lydon Harrell is, is one. Um, there are who, lots of them. Who's he? Um, he is a man who was... Now, I'm not anti-Mason, but no. I, I have suspicions about Masons. Some of the things that they do mm -hmm. in, in the darkened rooms, and I've been told that... Well, it's a secret society, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I know that he sabotaged me in my case. I think there's money. Oh, he's the judge. The no, I've had a number of lawyers that oh. they sort of said, because, you know, I have no lawyer. I'm trying to fight for all these other women and, and mothers and for the people who know truth. And because I'm verbal, because I'm articulate, and I'm also gullible, you know, I want to believe that there's somebody good out there mm -hmm. who's going to help me fight this thing. Because I've got photographs of being battered. I've got doctor's signatures. Sarah McClendon, the senior White House correspondent, has an affidavit where she tried to call my house. And men answered the phone and said, this is uh, a military base, and the Griggses don't live there anymore. Now, Sarah McClendon could not even get through to my house for two months, she had to go to another phone just to call me. So I knew that all these other people I'd called in Washington were trying to call me, and the phone's calls were being rerouted. Now that is in this book. That This I found in, in Goodwill. And so if I shouldn't mention this because they're going to go now start calling Goodwill, but all the intelligence divorces... There are a lot of divorces going on. The wives will throw out their husband's books, or the uh -huh, husbands will uh -huh. throw them out. They're mad at the government. But, you know, I found that's why they've been raiding my library. That's you know, why they've been... What's the title of this book? This title book is called Intelligence and Electronic Warfare Operations. Okay. Now, this book is all about what happened to me. Army. Hmm. Air Force. Um... Marine Corps. Where is the FBI 
uh, Psychological Operations Unit. Quantico, Marine Corps base. The only FBI agent who came to me, who was allowed to come to me, was Dan McNally, 20-year Marine. Homosexual, I believe. I'm pretty sure he is because, you, you know, you know, and I'm not saying that he's a bad person, but I am saying that I was not allowed by any other FBI, to have any other FBI agent mm -hmm. come and hear about the break-ins to my home, the battering that I went through, nearly killed, the murder of my husband's first wife, serious business. She's in a grave, Sue, Suzanne Workman Griggs. She died on April, April Fool's Day, 1987. And the doctor wanted to do an autopsy. Couldn't do it because the two men who were doctors in that hospital, Dr. Lawrence Smith and Jean uh, Lamb, army officers. They've got their, they owe their life to, to this mm -hmm. uh, business. And they, and they take orders. Of course they take orders. The judges, the judge in my case, Judge John Moore, his first wife uh, was put away because she was telling truth. And I found out from Carrie Brown, who's an army officer who had a purple heart, who told me exactly what she told him. Now, he's the judge in my case. Mm -hmm. Across the street from me lives <clears throat> another judge, Judge Jefferson Davis Reed, Naval Intelligence. He found my suitcase in the woods. I've known his family since the beginning of time. His sister, Martha Ann Reed Ellis, is married to one of these intelligence guys, Tim Ellis, um, and divorced. He's now with the, um, the federal, he's a judge, he's a federal judge. His mother, her, her family are intelligence people, not Americans. Tim's mother, they're not Americans. Um, he's a naval officer taking orders. What is a naval, what are all these judges in being under a chain of command? And why are they attacking the mothers and the women who are telling truth? And why are they breaking into honorable people's houses, ministers, and so forth, using these electronic warfare tactics? Mm -hmm. Diverting phones, uh, downloading caller IDs, um, having bogus people answer the phone. In other words, instead of getting this person mm -hmm. at that number, they get somebody else. Mm -hmm. For example, I called in an emergency, I called the state police. And I'm pretty smart, pretty discerning, and I wound up talking to a guy who worked for the ATF. And I said, you know, oh, well, what are you doing in the state police office? You're, he said, oh, I'm just a retired ATF guy. And I said, well, um, but I thought I was calling the state police office. He said, well, you're talking to me now. What, what can I do for you? <laughs> I said, well, if you're retired, I want to talk to an active duty, you know, a good guy from the state police, please. And I said, by the way, I don't like you ATF guys because of what you did at Waco. You all murdered innocent women and children. You, you ran over them, you, you shot them, you, you put tanks on them, and you killed them. You're murderers. I don't want to talk to you. He hung up on me. He didn't like what I said. Well, you know, if, his, if, his, if he's so sensitive and so defensive, how can he deal with women if he can't cope with truth? This is what, you know, 80% of the American people feel, or 90. Waco was murder, savage, brutal murder. Mm -hmm. And what they did to that man, um, you know, uh, uh, Randy, Weaver. Randy Weaver's wife. Yeah. Shooting a mother with a baby in her arms. Mm -hmm. What's going on here? Right. Yeah. And one woman hears that, one mother hears that, she doesn't like the ATF anymore. I don't know any woman who likes the SEALs anymore. I don't know any other mother who really, really likes the ATF anymore. I mean, what's going on here? We're mothers. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is stuff that went on in Germany. And uh, 
fear tactics. So we say, heck, these guys are adolescents. You know, they're adolescents. And so who's running them? Who's in charge? We turn into Dorothy, the Wizard of Oz. What's going on here? Mm -hmm. So little old mothers like us, we all think alike. And we're all Dorothys now, just marching and saying, look, guys, what's going on here? You're all little men from Oz. Why don't you grow up? Mm -hmm. You know? And it can be straightened out. Do you see any similarity in what's going on in this country in uh, China, Tiananmen Square? Uh, you know, we've all seen the picture of the young man standing up in front of the tank. Uh, I don't know how much long-term effect that had in China, but it still sticks in the minds of a lot of people here. You know, like Tiananmen Square for China, Waco for America. Are there similar, is this a turning point, a rallying point? Um, a man named Mr. Lee, who is an intelligence officer in Norfolk. Mr. Lee is the son of the major banker for the, the Russian government. He, is a, um, he worked for Dr. Richard Chang, who's also an intelligence operative. I believe he's an honorable guy. He's tall. He's sort of a Princeton, Harvard-looking guy. Very, I believe he's honest. Okay. He came to Virginia Beach, and I was putting together sister city organizations, and I was trying to get the leaders of all the different ethnic groups in Norfolk to sort of start a sister city program in globally, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's easy to do that, but I didn't understand how the intelligence community worked at that point. I knew things were going on. And he was bringing together all these potential sister cities in China. Our State Department had opened up um, cities which were, had independent corporate entities. And uh, we had uh, shows on, on all of this. This material's all been stolen out of my house by my husband and his friends. I started noticing, because I was led spiritually to, to goodness, to good people, to light and truth. I didn't understand the weapons and drug military culture that's, that's running our government and, and I believe parts of the world. There is not one woman that I know of mm -hmm. who's in this business. I believe and, and I had the pleasure of meeting your wonderful wife last night, Pastor Strawcutter. Mm -hmm. This is a woman who's wonderful. This is a woman, this is my kind of woman, you know, and I've met a lot of women like that. Mm -hmm. We go through hurdles, um, and I don't mean to cry. It's all right. But we're strong, and we know truth. And they're going to have to kill me before I give in. The, I believe in good men like you. I believe even my husband's core is good. I think that's why he's away. Um, I looked at, and that's the way I have this, why well, I have this little book here. It has the, the list of the members of the CFR, Council mm -hmm. of Foreign Relations. Um, Do you recognize names in the C that CFR list? All these names that I've underlined, I know. Okay, you're out of camera there. You're out, you're out of frame. Go ahead and pull it in close. There we go. All right. All these names that I've underlined are friends of my husband's, or I personally know. Okay, okay. Um, my son... John Garland Pollard, and I hope I'm not jeopardizing my family, but, um, and I believe that there are some good people possibly in here, so I want to qualify that and say right. they're not all bad. Just because you happen to know them or underline doesn't mean that it they're It doesn't mean that they're a bad. bad list. No, right, right. no. But, um, and I don't have my glasses on, I'm 
blind as a bat and I had surgery so I can't hear right. I'm just, just a, you know, 55-year-old wasted woman. <laughs> Not at all. But um, there are quite a few names here. And um, it's, it's quite a long list. I mean, we're only at the end now. <laughs> this is the, you know, Bill Clinton's on here. You've got the Rostos. You've got 11 Cohens, you know. Uh, okay, we're a disease. You've got Mary Halab's son. I'm pretty sure that's, that's Kashmir. Um, Carl Vono. You know, you've got a lot of, uh, you've got the Commandant of the Marine Corps, whom I have my picture taken with. Um, uh, it's, it's an interesting list of elite political, military, uh, banking individuals. And, uh, and the sons of some high-level people. So you have all these powerful people in a, uh, in a club yeah. that uh, has common goals. Yeah, which is global uniting, mm -hmm. uh, global control. And, uh, and I can see how one could sort of get sucked into it uh, idealistically, thinking that um, You know, it's it's uh, something that we should world peace and harmony and everything. And I mean, I, I can understand wanting world peace and harmony. I'm trying to find um, a name here. Um, but if you're a Christian, which, which I am, a Christian with a little C, because the early founding fathers never capitalized the word Christian. Did you know that? Hmm. Uh, did you know that all of the founding fathers were homeschooled? Did you know that? Yeah, Madison? I, I was aware of that. Yeah. Think about that. Did you know that most all of the Virginian founding fathers were only gospel Christians? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John didn't even read the end time stuff, you know, the, mm -hmm. the uh, Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Did you know that Thomas Jefferson was a born-again Christian the last, oh, seven or so years of his life. Mm. Did you know he was corresponding with um, Adams in Massachusetts? That he took the New Testament and the Gospels and was trying to find out everything that Christ did. And I believe he was murdered. And I believe it was, it had something to do with this Admiral Levy who took a mortgage on his house so that he could build the University of Virginia, so that he could take and get his papers, his correspondence with Adams. I believe it was, now I'm the only one you will have ever heard this theory from. My undergraduate degree is in Virginia history. Okay, so the University of Virginia was founded by Jefferson. Hmm? Money that he obtained by mortgaging his from, from a Kabbalist mm -hmm. by the name of Admiral Levy. Levy. Okay. Now, I know that... Um, it is an interesting theory. Of I, course it is. Yeah. Dare, dare to think, dare to theorize, dare to use the uh, hypothesis, you know, mm -hmm. to come out with the thesis. Now, Levy... Uh, you mentioned he's a Kabbalist. Uh, yes, and a Mason. Uh, like a descendant of the Illuminati. Of course. Mm -hmm. So it, and a weapons dealer and a reserve military officer. Even way back then. They were doing... Now, think about this. What they're doing today, they've been doing for Of course. Many think, think about this. John Paul Jones founded, supposedly the founder of our Navy, was a criminal. Why would they twist it like that? He was also a Kabbalist, also a Mason. He and um, the, uh, um, oh gosh, Lafayette. Lafayette was a, a, a weapons merchant. They raise up some people who are sort of questionable. Mm -hmm. Now, 
I know for a fact that Jefferson became a Christian. Um, he he did not necessarily he did not necessarily believe in the divinity of Jesus Christ. So maybe you could say he's he's not technically a Christian, but he said, "I'm a Christian." He was working towards. He was going to Baptist churches. He was contributing to the American Bible Society. Do you hear this? Mm, no, of course not. Jefferson was a born again Christian who was searching for truth, who was murdered, I believe. Okay, and at the same day, the same day he was murdered, so was Adams. Think about this. July the fourth. And of course, you're being a Virginian and a and a descendant uh, of James and, Madison and a student of, of Virginia's history. Somebody like yourself could dig this out and would dig this out. It would it of would course. be germane to you, whereas who else would it even be important to? I I yes I was um, mm -hmm. um, God God and and my my Christ have put me in the most amazing places and times. You would not even believe when I. I studied at the University of Edinburgh. I was uh, in, I received a grant in 19, I think it was 1978, to work on Lord Dunmore's papers. Lord Dunmore was the last royal governor of Virginia. I was invited by the current then Lord Dunmore, Johnny Dunmore, to work on the Dunmore papers. No one but John Sel Selby has done any work on Dunmore. So I, I mean, I stayed with. Um, I, I'm not going to mention too much because I don't. Um, but the point is, um, I know a lot about the triangular trade, uh, the what was going on in Bermuda. The uh, triangular trade. Yes, for Tom our Devine. The triangular trade is the illegal uh, weapons uh, drug. Uh, trade that is still going on today. Mm -hmm. uh, Israel is, is basically running it uh, with the New York bankers. Um, it has something to do with cabal cabalism because the Pentagon, the symbol for the Pentagon, the Brotherhood, uh, they they feel so compelled to not think for themselves, to sort of depend on somebody else who's more physics-oriented, you know. In other words, these guys are so much smarter than I am. They can be doing totally immoral things that, you know, are breaking up families, breaking up, you know, wives. And in other words, they're not looking at the structure of the family. They're not looking at the structure of society. They're not looking at the culture, the community, the basic ingredient that provides life, the planet, the trees. They're not looking at anything but sex. And when one perverts and twists, in other words, one focuses on, yes, sex is wonderful. You know, it's great. I'm, I'm a you know, great proponent. But uh, there's so much of a focus by this group on sex and the military you know, they go back to Greek days and they have all these symbols of, you know, the, the, the Washington Monument is supposed to be a phallic symbol, you know, and they say, well, this proves, you know, because the Greeks were doing it, the Egyptians were doing it, and it's the secret little group that was, you know, back in the days of Nefertiti and, and you know, Mark Anthony, and it just proves that we're just great because we had the Holy Roman Empire and Alexander Great that was, was homosexual and Catholic the Great, Catherine the Great was, you know, but it's debauchery. The, 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 the thing that one has to realize is that God knows best, you know. Mm -hmm. It is an abomination. It is a sin. Now, we've all sinned. We're all sinners. I shouldn't, I don't believe we should be putting people on stakes for doing this. I think God, Jesus Christ said, the simple answer is this, which Mandela said, the simple answer is this, just repent. Just show that you're changing your life. You know, I've sinned. Everybody sinned. Um, I don't believe that uh, that targeting people, uh, whether you target them this way or that, is necessarily is the answer. Mm -hmm. 
Now, I'm, this is just my personal opinion. I am not a, a judge. I wish I could be a much better judge than any of the, the Kabbalist male judges in Virginia Beach because they, they are doing this to women, mothers, who are honorable people who are telling truth. And uh, I would like to hear Hannah Moore tell her truth. I would like to hear Grover Wright's wife, Lynn, tell her truth. These are generals' wives. These are wives of judges in Virginia okay. Beach. Okay. I would love to have heard Ken Whitehurst's wife tell her truth. She was shot. Mm. Uh, I, you know, they, well, no, in Virginia Beach is uh, Pat Robertson. Would, would you like to see him be a judge? No, I would not. Okay, why not? I wanted to believe that Pat Robertson was honorable and good. He's a Marine. Did you know that? Did you know that he went to the psychological operations school, whatever that is, in, at Yale? Now, I'm not saying he's bad, mm -hmm. um, and I'm not going to judge Pat Robertson, but uh, I know that he under, was under the influence of a Belgian man who is very powerful in this group. I know the one thing I can judge him on is that, uh, well, I, I, can, I will say things, and I know I'm going to be, I know they're going to get me for this because Pat is very powerful. But if you walk into Pat Robertson's um, Williamsburg Inn, mm -hmm. it's a hotel there, and you're poor, <clears throat> and you are a woman or a person who's poor or an African-American who's poor, and you walk into that gift shop, you've walked into the house of the Sadducees and Pharisees. It, the dresses in there cost starting at $200. The belts, I mean, these are, these are clothes, basic commodities. Now, I'm not saying that that that's wrong, it's wrong to have money, and I, as I say, I'm not going to judge him, but from my perspective, the way my father was reared, um, it's, there's a lot of money going on there, and uh, Christ, I walk in the steps of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, well, you're not, just, I'm, I'm not really sure about all see, this. See, every, everywhere you seem to uh, to look and you find the leadership, whether it's in banking or education or religion, mm -hmm. there seems to be a, also this this uh, this line of military intelligence, yeah. uh, Ivy League background yeah. that, you know, the Pat Robertson has the same kind of pedigree as these other people mm -hmm. that we kind of filter through. Mm -hmm. If somebody's going to be the leader of a television big time ministry, it would have to be someone who would be kind of a chosen one yeah. to be allowed to yeah. rise in that kind of mm -hmm. power. And he may, I, I think he's a basically a good guy. You know, I mean, I, I really, um, I, I like the fact that he's, he's uh, promoting Christ. Uh, I nearly got arrested there. At, uh, at the I was, 700 Club? Uh, no, no. Uh, I went in to use a law library because I'm fighting the Kabbalist group in Virginia Beach because I was nearly battered to death. I was nearly killed. I am a totally abused, psychologically, physically broken bones wife. Now, it says that if you are this way, you just get a warrant and you get your husband to say you're, he's sorry or something. You know, that's all I wanted was for my Marine Corps husband to say, I'm sorry that I did this. But if he's got men behind him telling him to do this, they're not going to let him say, he's sorry, are they? Mm -hmm. No. If he's got Phil Holwager, the pastor, who's also Yale-trained intelligence chaplain with Pat Robertson, who's the pastor that I took my husband to to try and get him to become a Christian, if he's meeting with Phil Holwager and Phil Holwager is telling my husband what to do, that says that Phil Holwager is a programmer for my husband. He's been trained in mind control. And Phil Holwager admitted to me, I've had psychological training, yes. And he, it slipped out. Oh, well, I, I made the mistake and told George, you know. In other words, he let me know that he has power over my husband. 
So then there's Ty Kroll, who's in the same church with my husband, who is a, um, uh, a sailor, and a, he did some sexual things to his son, and he had his children taken away. Well, he's in the church and a good guy and everything, but he's a pedophile. Now, my husband, and I'm sort of taking up Ty Kroll's side, because we're in the same Bible study, it's, it's kind of interesting. But Ty Kroll and my husband are meeting kind of secretly with Phil Hallwager. And then there's, then there's um, T. Parker Host, who's running around nude at his farm, enticing my husband out, you know, and they go away for sort of boat trips for two hours. Now, I'm saying, as a woman and a wife, What's going on here? All of a sudden, we go up to Matthews County, where Hall Wager also has a house. Host has a house. But it's also where my grandfather, Miller, was born. So I feel very comfortable in Matthews County. These people were not born in Virginia. Do you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. yet, they're bringing, all of a sudden, spur of the moment, taking my husband up, and then taking my husband away on a two-hour boat ride, or we get to Phil Hallwager's son's house, and um, and then all of a sudden my husband's riding home with Phil Hallwager in the car. It's all been planned. So I'm saying, and this is just before, uh, just after my husband got back from Norway, and I'm trying to remember whether the king and queen of Norway had come either just before or just after this. It had something to do with the king and queen of Norway's visit. Mm. They wanted to keep me away from the king and queen of Norway because I believe they're Christians. I believe they're honorable people. And I, I was able to prevail against this group by going to the Norwegian ambassador, who's a wonderful man, and saying to him, uh, and this is where Jesus Christ comes in and God comes in. And I know that they're, they're with me because I'm good. And I was thinking about the good Norwegian people who wanted to see the king and queen of Norway when he came to NATO. Mm -hmm. And all I did was what any honorable citizen would do, representing the, the honest little people who were... Norwegians in Virginia Beach in Norfolk, I wanted them to have a chance to meet their king and queen. And the State Department didn't want me to do it, NATO didn't want me to do it, the Kabbalists didn't want me to do it, and neither did my husband. But what happened was I was with a solid, wonderful person, Ambassador Chell Viba. And we went to the Norwegian Embassy. This was, um, I know I'm digressing and this is hard to follow. But um, Chell Viba and I were sitting at the table with my husband and an intelligence operative named Bill Nelson, okay. who tried to sabotage the Norwegian group that I was running in Virginia Beach. And um, Chell Viba, we were planning a trip to Norway in, in August, which I think was just a bogus sort of thing to kind of, I, I don't know. To appease you a little bit. Oh, yeah. And I knew things were going on with my husband and the weapon sales and, you know, all of this stuff. And Because he was dealing with the embassy, the American embassy, and with people, and, you know, there were things going on. And I knew things were going on. I was sensing it really strongly. So we were in Washington sitting around the, the big table in the Norwegian embassy with the ambassador sitting to my right, Bill and Kate Nelson to my left, uh, my husband across the way, and Suzanne Baptist, who is the daughter of the man who started the Sister City Association. And um, we were supposedly planning this, this trip for the mayor of Virginia Beach and her husband to Norway. And he let it slip, the ambassador let it slip, that the king and queen of Norway were coming to Norfolk in October. Mm -hmm. And the ironic thing is, it was the very day the Nobel Peace Prize was being awarded in Norway. I didn't know it at the time, but I thought, this is really strange later on. Here's the king and queen of Norway are at NATO headquarters. 
the very day that they're giving out the Nobel Peace Prize in Oslo, which is where the king and queen of Norway are. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned this to Mayor Obendorf, whose husband is involved <coughs> in this weapons sale stuff, because she, her husband, Roger Obendorf, and my husband went to this deserted airfield. Roger Obendorf is involved with Andrew Fine, who's Army Intelligence, who tried to take over the Norwegian organization from me when I knew that the Andrew Fine does all this group swinging sex with his wife and with NATO couples. And, you know, and I'm going, something's going on here. Uh, Roger Obendorf and my husband went to this airfield. I wasn't allowed. Mm -hmm. So I knew because my husband was meeting with other people like, uh, in other words, it, this is big. Yeah. Now, when you mention NATO group swinging sex, are you, are you talking about the the most some of the most powerful people in this world, the leadership of this military? Absolutely. Uh, and their wives being privy. I mean. Yes. Yes, I'm talking. Major. I mean, this does not give security to the people of not only this nation but the people of the world. No. To think that people who have the power to kill others, wage wars, send your sons and daughters yes. into battles, these people are complete, whacked out. Degenerates. Degenerates. Absolutely. Let me give you an example. Because I was involved, I love people from other cultures. I, I, I went to an Episcopal uh, religious girls' school, mm -hmm. and all of my, sort of, they had girls from all over the world there. They had a Turkish, my chemistry teacher was from Turkey. Her name was um, uh, Mrs. Kant, Kunt. I had a uh, daddy Dedean, was an Armenian. Turned out he was later a spy, or they cho told him he, everybody we, he was a spy, but he was from Armenia. I had a French teacher who was in the French Resistance. St. Margaret's School is a school for double agents, or at least, but it's a great school for girls because you, you, uh, you're with all these people from other cultures, you know, we had the president of the school's father was with the Ramco. I didn't know about all this, this stuff and how they kind of do it. Woodbury Forest is, is another school like that. I sent my son there. He went four years to Woodbury Forest, uh, which is where President Bush's son went, Oliver North's son went. Mm -hmm. It's in Orange, Virginia. Um, I didn't know how it all worked. And, and, I mean, if it works for peace and, and Christianity and, and love of Muslims, love of people, give them the right to their own cultures, the way the British did, you know, because uh, I believe basically wherever the British went, I know there's a big hate Britain movement going on, but um, wherever the Brits tended to go, uh, whether it was India or Africa, they allowed the cultures, they still wore saris and they, the, the, they still were, you know, the, the ragheads were ragheads to protect their heads from the sun. Now they're called ragheads and they're targeted as enemies by our little boys. Our little boys are taught to hate ragheads and to kill raghead women. Well, I don't think that's very Christian. So I'm looking at the, the top guys and they're not Christian. Mm -hmm. So it, it begs the question, well, what are they? Well, I, I, that question was in my mind after... I was married three years, and I started delving. My own little uh, Miss Marple, my own little, you know. Uh, and, and I've arrived at the, the definite conclusion that they are not, they're not only not Christians, but when you have group sex and homosexual sex and orgies and things of this nature, by the top people, who are running my city at least, certainly Virginia Beach, I started looking at other military towns and started asking questions. San Diego, the same thing. San Francisco, the mm -hmm. same thing. Key West, everybody knows about Key West. Boston, that's the major homosexual capital of the world. You know, they're having sex on the, on the highways. Guys are parking. They don't need, people can't even go into the restrooms in, in Boston. Um, of course, Washington, D.C. So, um... Not to we, mention the Oval Office. Yeah, well, but at least... Now, I don't know about... See, I, I know that he is sick and he's addictive, but I'm, I believe that... Now, that you all will all disagree with me, but I live with Sarah McClendon, and Sarah 
is a senior White House correspondent, and I believe he was just addicted to sex, and I believe that he was put into that office to try and control him, but I believe that he has repented. I believe he had strong grandparents who loved him who were Baptists. I, I have hope for that man. <laughs> now, I know a lot of people don't, mm -hmm. but I do, and I, I have hope for that marriage. I know she's a strong woman, and I know a lot of men don't like a strong woman, and I believe she loves him. And I believe that basically he loves her, and I believe they love their daughter. And I will say one thing, that at least, you know, and, and who knows what their motives are. It's between them and God, but I'm glad it came out for their marriage. Uh, and well, at least he's not, uh, he doesn't seem to be homosexually inclined. No, so we'll give see, this that, is it. Give them that the much guy, credit. And, and they don't like that, you see. That's why the little little guy who's, you know, the little short guy, what's his name, the homosexual? Um, Stenop Stenop Stenopoulos or... Oh, oh uh, yeah, his... Uh, George Stephanopoulos. Stephanopoulos. Well, I met him. See, I went into the, I went into the White House with Sarah, and I met him. He's a little short guy, and, and I even saw the place, the Mambo Jumbo room where he hangs out, right around the corner from the, from the Ontario. Well, it, homosexuals are one thing. It, it's, it's, uh, it's an abomination in, in God's eyes. It is an abomination. It's a weakness. It shows that they're very immature and, you know, we all go through stages in life where we're immature. And I wish he would grow up. Uh, there's a, a, a whitehead who's an ambassador who's a homosexual with, and his lover, is one of Bill Clinton's attorneys from North Carolina. Now, I like the way that man thinks. He's a homosexual, but I like the way he thinks. Um, James Angleton, CIA, was a homosexual. Uh, the head of the FBI was a homosexual. Uh, Paisley was a homosexual. They murdered him. All of the British intelligence agents were homosexuals. Um, I haven't yet arrived at my theory on, on that, except that it is a weakness. It is a moral weakness. It's a way to control people. No, it's, it's, it's. Now I say, look. Makes them very controllable. Yeah, I mean, tell truth. Because I've been through, I've been in situations that I'm not proud of, and I will tell anybody what I've done wrong. I'm not embarrassed to say, you know, this or that, uh, because I've been in situations uh, where I found out that this person. You know, I, I have to admit, I'm, I'm a sinner. But the point is, when you find out and you repeat the sin, mm -hmm. you're, you're addicted. They call it addictions. It's sin. And why is it sin? Because your weak nature, if you're in a position of leadership, you shouldn't be leading. Mm -hmm. yeah. And admit your errors. And that's why I think Bill Clinton will be stronger out of this. He wants peace in Israel. That's what this is all about. He wants peace in Israel. I did, I did notice that when, uh, when Hillary made overtures toward the Arabs, whoa, I mean, uh, somebody yanked her chain, and that, that became a major issue. I was living in Washington with Sarah McClendon in the Kennedy Warren before the election. If you will remember, a plane went down on his birthday. On whose birthday? Clinton's. Okay. I mean, there, I believe it was a plane... There was a traumatic, I went to his birth, he had birthday parties at seven different places. Mm -hmm. It was his uh, 50th birthday. The birthday party in Washington, he was not there, he was in, I think, New York or some other place, but I went to the birthday party, which was in the Kennedy Warren, in the basement of the Kennedy Warren. Okay. A friend of mine went in for the birthday party. The point is, that night, I remember it vividly, there was a psychological terror thing for Clinton. It, it was either his plane that went down, something happened that night that was meant to say, uh-uh, don't enjoy this birthday, buddy. Remember, we told you, don't run. George Shultz came all the way from wherever he was. Sarah told me this. George Shultz came all the way from, I think it was California, to meet with Clinton before the election to say, don't you dare run. You're going to get it if you run. I know it. And that's from Casper. Casper Weinberger is the guy who's, who's the evil one. Casper Weinberger pulls 
a lot of strings. He's the one because Castle Weinberger is involved with a lot of the weapons and drug dealers, the hit squads mm -hmm. that are run, the motorcycle gangs that Tedson Myers runs, <coughs> who is William Colby's law partner, who just happened to meet me when I was with Sarah at the Smithsonian party, Marine, 4th Marine, who they have this hit squad motorcycle gang in Europe and everywhere. They call it a motorcycle society. But who runs it? Retired military guys. And just after they meet up at Casper Weinberger's place up in Maine, Consuela Rice and Tedson Myers and um, one of the lawyers that uh, uh, Marianne Poor knows, the Motorcycle Society will ask yourself, what do they do? What happens right after the Motorcycle Society meets? Now, they'll probably, now that they'll probably get this and find out, well, we've got to change the time when our Lady Diana is murdered. They have, because uh, I read all the newspapers. I go into Barnes and Nobles, and I, you know, of course, they're going to cut out all the news and stuff. But they had a minor war in uh, the, was it the Netherlands or wherever, they had another attack by motorcyclists on Cyprus. In other words, they're stirring up trouble, murdering people so that they'll sell the weapons and So the you really think Diana was uh, murdered rather than just oh, absolutely. a reckless There's car no accident? There's no question she was murdered. I, I knew and sort of went out with a guy named Richard Ord. Okay. I later found out he was married. It was when I was single. He this was Prince bit, Charles' this bodyguard. Before you married your husband? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He was Prince Charles' bodyguard. Um, it's like I also went out with a guy who was divorced, a Marine, who was MacArthur's wife's bodyguard. Okay. Um, who turns out to be an assassin, a Marine assassin, who's living in Virginia Beach, I think, now. But I, I didn't see the connection with Marines and information. Do you know what I'm saying? It's kind of a, I didn't know how organized it all was. Okay, well, the, you gained that knowledge after you married your husband. Yeah. And then w during his drunken stupors, he just blabbed and yeah. told everything yeah. he knew. Yeah. Actually, his, his alcoholism opened up the door for you to find out all this Absolutely. stuff. Absolutely. If he hadn't been an alcoholic, That's course, why I praise God in a way, I don't praise God that his mind is destroyed. Mm. And that he's a he's a brutal uh, he hates women kind of you know but I think yeah I praise God for everything I've gone through because every every um, I know by his stripes we are healed because I walk in his shoes I have to as a follower of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. when you're punished when you go through hell on earth mm -hmm. he is giving you strength in in a it's not a funny sort of way. It's a very special way. Mm -hmm. um, I know I'm going to die. I don't know how I'm going to die. Well, we're going to pray that you stay alive. But I love him. Yeah. And he's just given me all the strength. I'm a weak human being. But um, he is the truth and the light. Mm -hmm. And when you walk in the light, you walk with him. Right. And it's not bad. It's great. It's marvelous. Tell you what, let's. Why don't we take our, our first break here? Yeah. And uh, so we can. You might need to use the restroom. And, yeah. Uh, oh, um, I know a lot about John Warner and Loretta Tate and stuff that is really kind of spooky because um, nobody's ever told this out loud. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he married Elizabeth Taylor. Warner, yeah. And he was... Go ahead and sit back so we can get you right okay. into the frame here. Yeah. Right. And? He was... There were murders around him. Uh-huh. Uh, he was having an affair with Loretta Tate, which everybody sort of knows, who was married to a dentist, Randy Tate, okay. who is his secretary or his main person. Mm -hmm. hey, hang on, so I'm going to have to make it. Randy mysteriously died. Randy died mysteriously. He, what happens is when the, when the guys find out about the mob and that their wives are involved with it, the husbands take off 
they go to the Eastern Shore or hot, you know, the closest they can to get away from Virginia Beach. Mm -hmm. But they die. There's, there's a homosexual clique on Virginia Beach that I know about very well, which has to do with the Coast Guard, and it's, it's a long story. But the point is, I don't know whether they're the ones who murdered Randy, but I suspect that Randy Tate was murdered. George Heilig is another one, I suspect, who was murdered, who was a delicate, very powerful guy, honest. He, he died, you know, very young. Um, and Dick Obenshane, who was an honest candidate for governor. And Dick Obenshane, um, Dick, Dick Obenshane was running for governor. He was the Republican candidate. He was an honest, honorable guy. Mysterious plane crash. Mm -hmm. And what happens after Dick Obenshane's plane crashes? Well, they have a little convention. It's conveniently right before the convention. You know, he's the, the titular guy. Well, Elizabeth Taylor comes into the picture. And never before, they just go right over Robert's rules and everything else. Elizabeth Taylor goes around, movie star goes around and says, I think you ought to nominate my husband. Well, he hasn't even been involved in the process. Dick Obenshane, who's honest, conveniently dies. John Warner comes right in there. They did not want Dick Obenshane in there because he was not control he was not controllable. Warner was. Same thing with Paul Tribble, who's a cousin of mine. Oh, I'm a Waring and he's a, his family are Warings and we're related. Mm -hmm. Paul was married to Rosemary Tribble. Well, there were some things that were going on, thinking that, uh, in other words, Paul Tribble could not really totally be controlled. He was, um, they got rid of him. Uh, Rosemary knew a lot of stuff, and um, they get rid of the, the good guys. Mm -hmm. Murder, I believe uh, that... Um, well, don't they refer to this as Murder, Inc.? I mean, yes. Another name yes. for... Well, the Marine so Corps are the assassins. The Marine Corps are the assassins for the mob. If you look at guys who've been in four years, let's, let's just take Tedson Myers, for example. Now, he's a very nice person to talk to. He was um, involved with the founding of Peace Corps with Sergeant Shriver. He's from the Brooklyn Bayonne mob. Uh, he came from that, that group. Mm -hmm. They sent him to Ohio State. Then he, his fourth year, as I understand it, he did something like truck driving school. Hmm. Then he goes into Korea and becomes UDT. UDT. And then they, then they underwater demolition. In okay. other words, assassin. Mm -hmm. He's, uh, you know, very smooth. Yeah, the, the mob in, in Virginia, uh, Virginia Beach, is... Uh, very, very strong, very well organized and connected with the military. Yeah, well, you, you indicated for that there, you know, there's a cop connection everywhere between the mob and military. Absolutely. The, the military is San run Diego. by the mob. The military is the mob. The Marine Corps are run, they're the assassins for the mob. They, they may only be in, as, as Tedson Myers was, for four years, but the individuals then go on to truck driving, you know, truck loading school. They're always loading things and, you know, moving things around. But then they send him to Harvard Law School. Mm -hmm. You know, then he's, uh, he's, he winds up, when, when I met him, or, or just actually, I met him after Colby's murder. But I find it rather unusual that I had spoken with William Colby, the head of the CIA, mm -hmm. who knew my husband well, who told me on the phone all of this stuff about the Phoenix program and Israel and all of that stuff was coming out and that um, he was going to be doing it. Okay, your husband told you. No, oh, no, William Colby, Colby on the phone. Um, and Tedson Myers was across the hall from him. Okay, so was, was, was William Colby... Murdered. Uh, uh, a, a, a good guy for the get-go, or yes, was he, he was uh, a good guy. one of the insiders they need to get rid of, or was he... 
He was an insider who was involved. He knew about my husband's involvement with Krulak, Victor Krulak, Al Gray, um, the uh, Russian double agent who was, I believe, Czechoslovakian or Georgian, who was called the Commissar, who was running everything in Vietnam. He was um, the murders, the assassinations. My husband was involved with the murders, the assassinations. He was involved with teams that did that. Uh, they were training boys to kill, okay, using again? mind control, <laughs> using... Uh, the whole reason for Vietnam or any of these conflicts is simply to uh, use up a lot of arms and make money. Yes. Basically, that's yes. all there is to and it. And to train more killers. Mm -hmm. To use more weapons. Absolutely. To make more money. Yeah. It's a sick, sad, little adolescent boy cycle. These are not grown up. These are little men from Oz. That's what I call them. Yeah. Al Gray is a sick little man. Al Gray is a That was the former commandant of the okay. Marine Corps. Mm -hmm. Carl Mundy is a sick, pathetic, lying little man. And he is? The former commandant okay. of the Marine Corps. Then, then you have Krulak, who is a son of, of an agent, of a double agent, Victor Krulak. Not American. These are not, these are men who the Constitution is just beneath them. People like me, their wives, and citizens like you, and honorable people, are just beneath them because they're special. They're elite, just like the German SS. That's exactly where this specialness came from, Germany, from Nazi In other words, they took with them the most perverted aspect of Nazi Germany, brought it over to the United States because over 200,000 of these guys came over. And of that, there were some who were existentialist, humanist, anti-Christians. They hate Christians. Mm -hmm. You know, what happened to the, the, flat, the Nazi, the cross of the Weimar Republic was turned this way. Um, Hitler was, was homosexually recruited in a brothel. He was working in a little brothel. A, a Kabbalist, uh, Zionist doctor came in and said, oh, you look special and great. And in other words, he was one of the many like Oswald who could be used. Mm -hmm. And they see how they grow rather than see how they go. They see how they grow, manipulate them. They, this is why they have so many, the Army has so many psychological operations specialists. And the one way to keep them is secrecy. And anybody who believes that Jesus Christ I mean, everywhere you read in the Bible, he talks about openness. Mm -hmm. Truth is light. You walk tall. You don't hide behind trees and, and be the snake, mm -hmm. you know, in, in Adam and Eve and be deceptive. Truth frees you. Mm -hmm. Truth is a liberator. It's your ally. And the power of their operant conditioning is all in secrets. Yes. That's the one way to tell if they're evil, if they're... Um, weak if they're cowards or bullies. Mm -hmm. The one way to tell the cowards and the bullies who are now at the very top of the Army, the Marine Corps, the Navy, Gaiman, Hartzog, Abram, Krulak, especially Charlie Wilhelm, who's doing awful things with, you know, men and women. What, what okay, would... Charlie Wilhelm, again, he is... Charles Wilhelm he, I met in Norway. He, he's he a, is my he, husband's close, one of his closest friends besides Michael O'Boyle. Okay, They're and these called are all Cherry Marines. Marines. Yes. Uh, generals. Gen now he's a general because they rise to the top. Mm -hmm. If they're in, if they're one of Gray's boys, and I, I talked before I went public. I went to colonels and wives. And boy, I mean, I had conversations, and I'm not going to mention their names, but I had wives tell me when I first found out, and uh, a wife said, it was the most cryptic conversation I've ever had in my life. I said to my blank friend, um, have you ever had another wife? She said, hundreds of times. Her husband was, was a very important person. Mm -hmm. Uh, very important. So he, and he's working now for Al Gray. Al, well, Al Gray 
um, is so, he pulls the strings. It's all New Jersey mob. Where do you think Al, J, uh, Al, Al uh, Gray was born? Right outside of Atlantic City. My hun husband was born in Atlantic City. Sheehan's father was in the mob. You remember that big concert uh, that they had back in the 60s um, where everybody was smoking pot and they were doing experiments on young people? Mm -hmm. they, they had all the public... Yeah, I forget Guess the name of it. Guess who do, did all the flying in of all the bands and the drug dealers and everything? Who arranged it all? General Sheehan's father. Oh, now, this Woodstock? is the head. You're Woodstock, about Woodstock. Woodstock, New York. That's where he's from. Now, isn't that unusual that the head of NATO would be, and his brother is doing all kinds of weapons deals and selling things to the military. And I went to his wife's home, who they lived in the Virginia house, after my husband disappeared. Well, was Woodstock a kind of an, a... Uh, of course, a testing ground for experiment. drugs. Okay. Of course, it was just an experiment. Like the Jim Jones thing down there in... Um, Canada. Yeah, that, he, was, he was working. I think even little David Koresh was used because he had a, a Mossad, he had an Israeli agent. They always get away, don't they? The Israelis always are in there, but they get away, don't they? Men, um, Mandela. I don't mean Mandela. Um, the, the guy in Panama. Um, Noriega. Noriega had, had a, he was an Israeli double agent. The, anybody who is Jewish is automatically a member of the army, the, mili the uh, arm, Israeli army. Mm -hmm. right. They have a joint relationship. How can they be loyal to America if they will shoot ships like the Liberty mm -hmm. and it's covered up? Mm -hmm. I dated... Um, Lawrence Geis's son, when I was a teenager, about the time I, I went out with, with your the governor the governor yeah. here and John Engler. John Engler. I'm sure if he's if he was in the uh, ROTC. ROTC class, I dated him and I, I got letters from him. I, he's a really seemed like a really nice guy, but I my love at that time was Tom Williamson, mm -hmm. and Tom Williamson was a Yaley. Uh, his his real father was killed in World War II. His mother, who was a Ballantine, Admiral Ballantine's daughter, a wonderful person, married Lawrence Geis, who was a captain and then he became an admiral. And I went to the change of command to the Forrestal. I really did like that family very much. And being a Norfolk girl, old Norfolk, you know, grandfather was in naval intelligence. He retired a captain in the reserves, military doctor, very prominent family, you know, and I live next door to my grandparents. I was sort of the good to, to date this girl, you know, she's mm -hmm. a lot of fun and stuff. So I dated Tom and I went to Yale to visit him and so forth uh, with Bob Tate and, and some of the guys up there. Well, Captain Guy, Admiral Geis, took over the uh, command of the Forrestal, he was the head of the whole uh, everything for the military when the Liberty was, was bombarded by the Israelis. Right. And I, one of my best friends, Josie Lennon, Josie Toth Lennon, you talk about a wonderful, um, she's been through a lot, woman. I've learned a lot of information from her. Um, Josie's brother was on that ship. Did he survive? Of course, no, he was murdered. Hmm. He was a rising star, <laughs> brilliant young I think boy. about 30 some guys died on the SS Liberty, didn't yes, they? Yes, he was one of them. Yeah. It's now being run by a group that's holding it down. You know, they don't, they don't want it. Why, why don't you? Those Israelis, and, and yet every Jewish person who's in the military is a member of that mm -hmm. army, whatever it is. Now, something is very strange here when you have the whole State Department, not one Christian, not one Protestant in the, in the Near East section, not one Muslim. Mm -hmm. Why not? They have Jews there. We have Muslims in the Navy. Why are there no Muslims in the Near East section of the State Department? Why are there no born-again Christians or cr real honest people who are not under some chain of command? Why don't we have anybody who can decide right and wrong, 
who has to be interpreted, you know. Mm -hmm. Something is strange when you have a State Department that is run by Israel. There's something really strange. It's no wonder there's no peace. Mm -hmm. Do they want peace? No. They want to control all those little countries around there. And one, there was an interesting uh, luncheon, excuse me, it was a dinner that I had over at Carol and Millis's house with the Marine wives mm -hmm. so, and some of the, uh, well, I don't know what, what they really, really are, but I thought they were wonderful until this night. And I was really caught into this, I was getting into this cult, you know, shh, don't talk, mm -hmm. don't talk about the go-go dancers because your husband's career, you know, even mm -hmm. though, shh, don't tell this, don't tell that, quiet, you'll get, you know. We were sitting around the table, and we always would do prayers before dinner. And there was a woman there, and she was from Pat Robertson's place. She was married to a, a Jewish guy. And I'm not saying that he was bad. I think I met him once. They were at Carolyn's Christmas party. But um, it was right after, was it Bagan who was killed, or who was shot? Uh. The prime minister, or the president of Israel. You know, my mind's blank. I know. It's either Begin or uh, no, whatever. Anyway. anyway, it was right after that, and um, it's the furthest thing from my mind. You know, I was thinking, oh, great dinner. You know, this is great. So this woman said, and we were in the middle of the prayer, and she said, oh, just thank you, Jesus. I thank you, God, that you killed Begin. We just praise you for... For that, you know, this is an evil man. We just praise you, God, that you killed so-and-so. Yeah. And I'm sitting there. <laughs> you know, I've, I've traveled, been 20 times to, you know, England and Scotland and known all these NATO people and, and so forth. And I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm thinking, what, 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 what did I just hear? Thank you, God. Jesus killed the, the, the head, you know, because he wants peace. This is the guy who got the Nobel Peace Prize with Arafat. And uh, I'm going, what? So what do I do? This is one of these moments, these crossroads moments where you have to take. My, my culture, which is mm -hmm. Southern Protestant, mm -hmm. I have to say something. I'm over 50 now. I'm not shy anymore. You know, I've got six grandchildren. So far. Um, I said, just in my nice little way, I said, what? <laughs> what, what did you just say? And then Carolyn Miller says, well, we just, you know, he's really, you know, I said, wait a minute, wait a minute, didn't he just sign the peace? It was like they knew something I didn't know. Right. And I was trying to say, what? Wait a minute. And I looked around at everybody, and it was like, I'm an outsider. I said, hang on, I'm, I'm going to adjust this mic. All right. Too bad. Nope. Nope, but just every now and then, this sleeve makes contact with it. Oh, and when right. it does that, it'll go. <laughs> okay. So I, I, I said, wait a minute. I said, wait a minute. I had to get him to, like that go-go dancing thing. Yeah. I had to interpret Jesus for them. Because these are, these are supposedly followers of, of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I said, do you, do you all, I want to get this straight, do you all mean to tell me that you all are for the murder of a man who wants peace in the Middle East? Just, you know, and Carol and Millis, always the one, you know, well, you know, of course, so and so and so, you know, we, well, you know. So. And I said, well, wait a minute, I think you're wrong. Because Jesus Christ would have been behind peace in the Middle East and so forth. Well, I was just, you know, you can't trust her anymore. Mm -hmm. I wasn't going along with the program of whatever whatever Israel wants to do, if they want to kill Palestinians, if they want to sabotage, because George told me that that's what they do. They do a lot of sabotage. They, they train. They take men who are Jordanians, Iranians, Iraqis, sons of leaders, and they bring them over here, wine them and dine them, mm -hmm. and then rev them all up to hate their parents, and they give them weapons. They, 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 what they do is they feed their ego. This is intentionally done, according to my husband, by the Marine Corps. I mean, it is a, 
They train them. They take them. Well, this, this is an interesting point. Um, things that your husband has told you specifically about the, the training techniques, this is right from his mouth. This is mm -hmm. what is done. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Intentionally, because the objective is to get the goal, whatever it is they want, Machiavellian or, you know, Clausewitz. And, of course, my husband was reared. He, he was suckled on Proust, Sartre, Camus. If you want to read his thesis, it's in French. It was written by Todeve and, you know, but it's at the Princeton University uh, Library. You can read what my husband believes. Now, this is the chief of staff of the Marine Corps. This is a guy who writes with a purple pen, which means homosexual, mm -hmm. arrogantly so, writing with a purple pen. Al Gray, he's working under Al Gray, called Gray's Boys. This is what they call them, Gray's Boys, all homosexuals, Cherry Marines. There are books on Cherry Marines that I've got. Everybody knows about Cherry Marines. Now, if you have to be a Cherry Marine to get to the top, and then you read about Krupp and the German High Command, and you know that they're using the same word, special, special, Mm -hmm. You know that they changed the eagle to be the colonel and the captain. You have to get an eagle. And that started in when all of these people started coming over to change the America to be generic, no more of a Christian nation. Mm -hmm. And that started the head of the Marine Corps, who was a Kabbalist, Zionist, mm -hmm. in the 1860s, 1850s. You can do your research. When did they make, change the Marine Corps emblem from being, I think it was a bugle, to, to having an eagle on top of the world? And who was the commandant when that happened? Ask that question and find out the answer. And then wonder, like I do. And George told me, he said, you know, we've always been the, the murderers. He said, you know, why do you think we have the red line down our pants? And the, he, said, he said, now we because he was trying to interpret for me. We have mm -hmm. this X on top of our hat or something. You know, it had something to do with uh, target practice. I spoke to his uncle, Dick Griggs, who also works for the mob, the intelligence community. He, it has something to do with the schools. Um, they have money, limitless money. I believe it's mob money for poor boys who, to go to these fancy schools. Uncle Dick has a little computer like Roger Obendorf does. Uncle Dick. George's uncle, Richard mm. Griggs, who became his father because they were trying to get him away from his father. He was away from his parents for eight years. Mm -hmm. His uncle handled him. His uncle um, is getting money from this group. He used to be just a school teacher in Princeton. But he has two sons, uh, Bob and Jeff, who were like my husband's brothers. Now, what does Bob do? That's the question of the century. What does Bob do? Bob handles an account for my husband. Uh, and I started asking questions about, well, wh where is this? Bob moved from Princeton, then he moved down to Oklahoma City. He was near that Augusta Golf Club and you know, now he's in Colorado, and he's handling this account that George has money in. And I see papers of my husband's after Beirut. In other words, he'd done a job, and it was a civilian job. Now, he, here's a colonel in the Marine Corps doing a civilian job, TAD. TAD. Where, um, it's where they... They go off and do a job, okay. sort of undercover. They right. get a new... George says he's had so many different passports with different names. I'm getting mail from an Engelhard. He's got accounts now for an Engelhard. He's, I get mail from Princeton private account. From Merrill, Merrill Lynch is involved with the mob. They have rogues in there who, mm -hmm. who launder cash mm -hmm. money. They have money, people who launder cash money in Norfolk, I know some of the people who handle the cash. No, no, your husband. Drug money's in cash. Your husband is Jewish. No. Oh, okay. Oh no, he's a, a German. He's the son of a, a German family, 
but his his father was in was in Atlantic City doing very shaky things. In fact, his father, his father's father, I should not his father, take that back. His father, Ray, um, was a weak, precious little man, and I liked him. Nobody listened to, to Ray. You know, the mother ran everything. The mother was strong, domineering, bossy. Uh, and I must say she was not attractive, but Ray was handsome. They married. They had three boys. She, I think, she, I know she had to get married, the older brother, but in those days it was very embarrassing, you know. Well, Ray didn't have anybody. Ray was essentially an orphan as such, although he had lots of brothers. But let me tell you what Ray told me. I was in California uh, with... Um, his mother, George's mother and father, staying at his brother Don's. Mm -hmm. And everybody, you know, the, the world revolved around mother. But Ray had a lot of wisdom there, and I was anxious to know what really went on in New Jersey, why they left New Jersey, why they left Atlantic City, what happened in Lawrenceville. Uh, why George was put in this school and not seen for eight years. What did happen? All right. It had to do with the fact that they were poor and desperate, that the sister, uh, Rhoda's sister, George's mother's sister, married someone high up in the intelligence community who was a, um, he went to the Presbyterian school or something like that. But Ray had been in prison. George's father had been very shortly in prison in New York. And this is, you don't talk about that. Mm -hmm. Ray had seen his mother run over by his father with the girlfriend in the car who wound up being the stepmother. Mm, you don't okay. talk about that. All right. There were seven boys, I believe. Ray was right in the middle. All of these pictures have disappeared from my house. Supposedly my husband has never come in to the house. All of this, you know, the, the pictures of, of assassins like Rockland Williams and... Uh, you know, you can't believe the things that, that are slowly being taken out of my house. Why? Well, obviously, uh, so that uh, your credibility can be attacked if you ever tell anybody about this stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's a miracle you got up here with the pictures that you did. Yeah. That we're including in this video. Absolutely. Uh, that, uh, you know, supports your credibility. It's, it's just a shame that this video wasn't made a year ago. I know. Or 18 know. months ago. Yes. Because pretty soon they'd have me not even married to George Griggs. Now... If they could destroy all the records. Of course. And it's, and it's, prob it's possible to do that. Of course. Uh, because I think it was... Um, Orwell said that um, he who controls the past controls the future. And he who controls the present controls the past. Absolutely. So those who control the present can modify the past any way they want. In fact, they could erase you... Right why, do, why do you think we're in computers and everything's on computers? All they have to do is... I had tapes that I... I bought a little Radio Shack tape and I ta taped uh, General Gray's the conversation with Gray's wife, mm -hmm. Jan, mm -hmm. um, who said, oh, we don't know where George is. We don't know... And I talked to General Gray on the phone. Mm -hmm. If they don't know where my husband is and he's working for Charlie Wilhelm now, mm -hmm. what does that make Al Gray? After I've been battered, mm -hmm. and I'm calling, I've got pictures of bruises, mm -hmm. hematomas, broken foot, uh, putting a 45 to my head, laughing at me while he's standing over me with my arms in pain, mm -hmm. chasing me in bathtubs, you know, so I'm hiding and pl saying, please don't kill me, while he's laughing. Mm -hmm. I have took diaries and so forth. Why do they want my diaries? Why? Don't they want my evidence in the court of this? And I've got it right there for Judge John Moore, who's a commando. Why does John Moore kind of giggle at me? Why, you know, what is so funny about being battered as a wife? When his first wife is dead in the grave. When well, what's funny to them is that it doesn't matter what your claims are. They're in control. That's it. The, 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 That's the chickens it. can do anything they want as That's long as it. the foxes are all in goose. That's it. That's it. And why I have a transcript 
at the first commissioner's hearing, and Colonel Barry Cantor, who is a Kabbalist, who lives right around the corner from T. Parker Host, who's a commando assassin mob guy, brags about it, who now has about seven or eight agencies and is a friend of George Bush's all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. um, Barry Cantor, his office is right next to George Sharp, and they are persecuting me in courts right and left. And it doesn't matter what he says. It's like he's just totally, you know, so it doesn't matter. We'll just, uh, we'll just ruin you. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and then, so I find another lawyer, and his name is uh, Doug Ballard. Ballard. Uh, General, uh, uh, what's his name? Up in Washington gave me Doug Ballard's name. Um, and I, I thought this, I still think he may be a, a, an honorable guy, and I'm trying to remember his name because um, he's talking about a lot of the stuff that's going on. But Ballard is a name that has connections to the Deep South. Well, Doug Ballard went to VMI, and I knew Doug Ballard uh, because he was a law partner of Philip Purrington, whose brother Charlie I knew, and I liked Charlie Purrington. Mm -hmm. He was, um, when I was dating... My first husband, John Pollard, they were best friends. Mm -hmm. And I went out with Charlie a couple of times, but I was, you know, um, I was making my debut, and, you know, mm -hmm. I was kind of, Charlie was just a good friend, and still I like him. And I, I, I introduced him to his wife, and they're still married, and she's a Carolinian, he's a Carolinian. Well, um, Doug Ballard was in law practice with Phil Purrington. Well, so I went to Doug Ballard, and I heard he was a Christian. And I got a lot, I got the information from Paula Ballard about um, Openshane's murder from Paula Ballard. And I, because Paula was very involved with the Republican Party back when Openshane was running for governor. They were insiders. He was an Army intelligence person who was doing business with the Saudis. He was up in Washington with Oliver North and that whole crowd. Doug Ballard was doing business, illegal business, money laundering. But I was attracted to him because General Ben Parton said, maybe this guy will help you. Benton Parton. Gen B General Ben Parton mm -hmm. gave uh, me Doug Ballard's name. It, do you think Ben Parton is a good guy or a bad guy? Well. I don't now I don't know because what I was set up or maybe he didn't set me up but I went to Doug Ballard mm -hmm. and you know he's a shyster this Ballard. guy is crooked as they come or either very weak and I think that mm -hmm. goes along together mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I told him about the things that have happened to me and, ever, and keep in mind he's army mm -hmm. he's army colonel Ballard is VMI but I didn't know what I now know and VMI again is army Kabbalah S you know it's but VMI stands for something Virginia Military Institute oh, okay and because um, Benton Parton is uh, very well known in certain oh, circles now ben for Parton. challenging the Oklahoma City bombing okay well then I believe in him I think he just didn't know what I know about Doug Ballard I think, because I think he, he heard Doug Ballard went to this born-again church and his okay. wife is all this, this born-again, which is great, mm -hmm. and I'm, because I'm born again, but, but let me tell you what happened. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, uh, and, and they may have been persecuted. Uh, they did go through some persecution, but what happened was, um, and, and maybe they know too much, but what happened to me was this, because he is part of the brotherhood. Doug Ballard is. I trusted him with my file. See, Barry Cantor, my husband's lawyer, is an army colonel. Ballard is a colonel. The judge, John Moore, is a colonel. The commissioner, two of the first commissioners were colonels. Andrew Aggie, who is mixed up with crooks in Virginia Beach. He's a commissioner in Virginia Beach. Uh, then there is the, the first one we were going to get. No, Aggie was the first one we were going to get, Army Colonel Reserves. Then there is um, uh, the former Commonwealth Attorney, um, 
uh, Andrew Evans. He's in the Masons, and I just talked with his wife not long ago, and she was shaking her head like, yeah, I know all this stuff, I know all this stuff. Well, there's a brotherhood, and, and Andy Aggie and Andrew um, just Evans, who was Commonwealth's attorney, they're part of this brotherhood. Now, they were going to judge the case mm -hmm. for me. Then we get the third guy who was in the House of Delegates, Ned Caton. He is a Coast Guard JAG intelligence guy. So finally, I, we, we choose Ned Caton to go because I, he had done work for us, and I don't think that's really right. Uh, but he, the point that I'm trying to make is that every single one of these men who were judging a battered wife, almost killed, first wife dead, do something with the husband, bring up the battering, mm -hmm. it's handled. We go into his quiet, secret office. I think I have a lawyer given him $1,500, and he's one of these society lawyers. And um, he doesn't want to mention anything about the abuse for some reason. Uh, and and he's I'm sort of being flim-flammed, you know. I. Well, this is part of the divorce proceeding, or yeah, did you the, bring a separate cause of battery? Or this I is all did the, the battery. See, I started everything. <clears throat> you, so you filed a criminal charge? I filed a criminal charge. Of battery? Battery. Okay. Because... You know, you're indoctrinated to believe that if your husband's a, a perpetrator, mm -hmm. my husband is a gross perpetrator. Okay. And so you were si seeking civil damages against him? No, all I no, all I did was take out a warrant to have him oh. brought back. I see. And that's when the the twenty year Marine police officer came in, the twenty year Marine FBI agent came in, when I went to the police. Head, head chief of the police, Chief Wall, who's a very nice man, went got I have, I have a friend who got me in to see him. Mm -hmm. He said, "This is big. This is way over my head." But he assigned a wonderful man named Bill Dean okay. to me to mm -hmm. call any time. And I must say, this is a wonderful man. I could call Bill Dean mm -hmm. any time. And. Uh, I mean, there are some good people, probably in the Masons, I don't know, I, but there are some good people. Um, but the problem was, he can't control it. Now, why, if you're a Mason, why can't you control battering of, of military wives? That's a question I ask myself. Why is it that, that they cannot control a perpetrator who's killed his first wife and I've nearly been murdered. Well, the answer is hierarchy. hierarchy. Okay. Right. right. Take so I start okay. saying now, in Virginia Beach, if the chief of police has no power, mm -hmm. if Bill Deans, who's head of the CID, has no power, I'm, I'm looking and, and wondering, okay, I'm a battered wife, and I start meeting other high-level battered wives in the courts. Mm -hmm who are having the same treatment by Judge John Moore and Barry Cantor mm -hmm. and Andrew Aggie and Grover Wright, who battered his first wife, Lynn. They made it spread the word that mm -hmm. she's crazy. Lynn Wright is not crazy. Mm -hmm. Grover Wright was running around with Ann Wood and wound up marrying her, and Ann Wood is now a blimp. Grover Wright is a perpetrator. Mm-hmm. John Moore is a perpetrator. Mm -hmm. He's now married to a girl who's in my garden club. And, you know, he was a commando, guerrilla. His father was a general in the Coast Guard, which the mayor's husband is a colonel, a captain, whatever, captain in the Coast Guard. The, uh, all of the so there really is an elite clique that runs everything. Absolutely, everything. and it's not the CIA. No. Is there a name we can give this group? Well, George George calls it in in his diary. He calls it members of the firm. He called it brotherhood. Uh, 
he mentioned the old guard, um, Army. It's Army. Mm -hmm. And it's White House. Mm -hmm. did, uh, did George ever talk about... Um, but the presidents don't know about it necessarily. Okay. Did, did Oswald, or did your husband ever talk about Oswald? Uh, yeah. In terms of knowing anything about his can, his handlers, or how that was. Yeah. All the going. way the way George talked about Oswald was, the way, uh, he. When when you communicate with an alcoholic like that when he's drinking, mm -hmm. um, and he's been totally battered, mind controlled, but mm -hmm. is fed lots of money, being poor and so forth, a woman, fifty five percent of of what people say. Is, uh, is verbal. And then you learn to read the, the nonverbal. Mm -hmm. jo George was diarrhea of the mouth. <laughs> mm -hmm. Verbal. Um, but when I mentioned, it's like when I mentioned the word General Jim Joy, I knew it was General Jim Joy who had authorized the terrorism of my life. I know it is General Jim Joy, General Carl Steiner, General Hartzog, General Abram, General Gaiman, and Sheehan. I know. And, and Krulak, 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 Krulak. These men are the ones who are perpetrators. They bugged my phone, downloaded my caller ID. They have authorized and given money to people like Tedson, well, not Tedson Myers, but certainly Alexander Robinson, Earn Reynolds, mm -hmm. Fourth Marine, JAG, worked for the Justice Department. The Justice Department is involved. There are, there are rogues in the Justice Department who think they are handling people by using cruelty, tricks, psychological games. This is not the way you handle a nation. Women know this. Right, but Mothers I'll, I'll, know this. Like I was, you mentioned um, uh, New Orleans <clears throat> as yes. kind of a center of uh, of mob mind, and mind control, mind control, um, illegal criminal activity. Did your husband ever mention any of the the, the people there in? Yes, he did. In it, fact, he went down there. Okay. He went down there with General Gray, with Michael O'Boyle. During the time of '63. Oh, he w he was always going down there, going and 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 uh, Michael O'Boyle was going down there. Um, well, your, your husband was a young man at that time.